Good morning, church. Um, hope everyone is doing good. Hope you had a beautiful week with Jesus. You know, it's so beautiful to worship our Lord Jesus because He's faithful and He is He is He's standing in His Word and and you know and He put breath in our lungs this morning. So we wake up and we just giving thanks to God. It's so beautiful. I know. And we are welcoming everyone to worship our Lord Jesus with us in Papa's house. You know, I just felt to read a scripture, uh, Psalms uh, 116. It's a beautiful scripture. It says that, I love the Lord for hearing me, for listening to my prayers. Yes, he paid attention to me. So I will, call, I will always call to him whenever I need help. Death rope were around me. The grave was closing in on me. I was worried and afraid. Then I called on the Lord's name. I said, Lord, save me. The Lord is good and merciful. Our God is so kind. The Lord takes care of uh, helpless people. I was without help and he saved me. My soul relaxed. The Lord is caring for you. The Lord, you saved my soul from death. You stopped my tears. You kept me from falling. I will continue to serve the Lord in the land of the living. I continued believing even when I said I'm completely ruined. Yes, even when I was upset and said there is no one I can trust. What can I give the Lord for all that he has done for me? He saved me. So I will give him a drink offering and I will call on the Lord's name. I will give him the Lord what I promise. I will go in front of all his people now. Very dear to the Lord are the lives of his followers. He cares when they face death. Lord, I am your servant. Yes, I am your slave as my mother was saved. You set me free from the chains of death. I will give you thanks offering. I will call on the Lord's name. I will stand before the gathering of his people and give the Lord what I promised. I will do this in Jerusalem in the country yards of the Lord's temple. Praise the Lord. You know, church so beautiful. It says that he paid attention to me. So I will all I will always call him whenever I need help. It's so beautiful. It says that you know our Lord Jesus paid attention to us. The time you called him, the time you you went into his temple, the time you went into his presence. You know, he pays attention to you no matter what, no matter who you are. The time you call upon the name of the Lord, the time you you just go into his presence, you know, he going to pay attention to you. Yes, Lord Jesus. And he says that the Lord is merciful. The Lord is good and merciful. And, and our God is so kind. The Lord takes care of helpless people. It's so beautiful. He says that the Lord cares for the helpless people. Church, if you are feeling like helpless people, you know, today the word of God says that He cares about you. He cares about you so much. He cares about you so much detail. You know, and He pays attention to you. When no one is paying attention to you, you know, He pays attention to you. When people pay attention to all your weakness, but my Lord Jesus pays attention to your strength. My Lord Jesus pays attention to your 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 good things. He cares about you. He, is, he has beautiful thoughts about you. Yes, Lord Jesus. You are faithful, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we welcome you, Lord Jesus. We welcome you, Lord Jesus. We welcome you, Lord Jesus. And we are coming into your presence, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
Yes, Lord, you are faithful, Lord Jesus. Lord, we just ask you, Lord Jesus, to open our eyes to see the glory, Lord Jesus. To open our eyes, Lord Jesus. Oh, 
return to your rest my soul for the lord has been good to you yes lord our hearts are filled with gratitude lord jesus the gratitude for what you have done for us lord jesus yes lord there has not been any god no man who became god and a god became man hallelujah jesus what a privilege that we have received in you lord that you came down for us lord you became man lord jesus so we would never say lord you don't understand what we are going through lord yes lord you've been in our place and you have suffered you have endured yet you were righteous you are righteous lord our hearts are full with gratitude lord jesus for what you have done for us yes lord we didn't deserve this lord but lord through your son jesus christ we have brought back and yes we have received the mercies the never ending mercies hallelujah lord holy spirit help us to sing of the praises of the thanks that we can give to you for what has done for us
सब शक्तिमान है प्रभु शो आपका जैसा कोई नहीं है प्रभु शो आप 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 योगी था से Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're faithful. You're, you're, you're mighty, Lord Jesus, in our life, Lord. Lord, Lord, you would have shouted from the heaven, "I love you." You would have shouted your your love from the heaven, but no, you just came in this world and you just showed us that you loved us, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. so much for caring us lord we are helpless people lord jesus without you lord jesus we are helpless people lord you care for us lord thank you so much lord thank you so much for your great great love for us lord thank you so much father lord you are so faithful you are so good and you are so mighty and and you are strong in your words lord you are you are you are what you are lord jesus you are who you are lord jesus we worship you for who you are lord jesus thank you so much for for your great great love great great mercy great great present great great compassion lord you are our king you are our only king you are only our lord jesus our personal savior lord thank you so much lord jesus we just want to give you glory and honor because you are you are lord jesus who you are and and only you deserve honor and glory lord jesus thank you so much for the lord the honor belongs to you father the honor belongs to the glory belongs to you alone lord jesus thank you so much father lord let your presence continue father lord jesus we just give you glory and honor in jesus name we pray amen, amen. let's pray as we know the nations are really struggling with the election in especially in america so i think i heard like uh, f- some of my friends that like they're really praying and also last week we gathered as papa saws and we could pray and we are still praying that something the uh, god's hand you know this is like something you know it's like very you know like v- like hectic thing and so god hands needs to come upon this so let's pray upon the nation especially in uh, america for the for the presidential leadership so hallelujah thank you jesus for the wonderful morning that you gave to us lord like all the song says lord, lord open our eyes and you are our good father and you are so faithful in everything and lord jesus and you are you are with us always lord you are the one going before us lord Yes, Lord, and your love never fails or it never, never fails or never stops that, Lord Jesus. So today we are praying for the mighty nation, America, Lord Jesus, as the like, election, all these things are weird and a lot, a lot of things are going on in that nation, Lord. So, Lord, we need your hands come, uh, needs to come upon that nation and you, you come and uh, you work among the people and the nation, Lord Jesus. We want to see the victory uh, from you, Lord Jesus. We want to see that you're working, your hands are going everywhere and doing the mightiest thing lord jesus lord you have to take the uh, like a final decision and your opinion is the final opinion forever lord jesus we don't want to take people's opinion lord jesus so we coming to you lord and if we are praying lord it's been like a days lord the people all the nations and all the people are waiting and praying lord and in a kind of many like a mindset and a lot of problems are really going on and a lot of struggles people are facing lord more than anything you are there you still in the throne and you still you still loving us you are still our father and our god there's only one god we are believing that is jesus christ so lord let your presence and let your holy spirit let your angels cover the nation lord and you do the uh, you do the selection lord and you give uh, like uh, uh, 
the mighty wisdom for the people Lord, to uh, to take care of all these things lord jesus and we are praying and blessing the nation lord and you be with the nation and the people lord jesus especially uh, he, uh, now we are here lord in india lord we are praying for india lord as uh, like a lot of things are going on uh, even you bless our leaders lord you convict their hearts lord and you uh, speak to their hearts lord jesus you uh, comfort with your love let them know realize your love and your mightiest way lord jesus and let them know you, who you really lord jesus and we are praying and blessing our nation all the nations we are submitting to you all the leaders lord jesus we are not praying for uh, uh, lord, and for something bad to happen but lord since that we are praying something good to happen uh, among all the nations and all the leaders lord Jesus, who work comes especially lord every nation we are coming uh, submitting in your mighty hand lord jesus and you do the mighty things in everyone's life and nations lord we praying and asking in your mighty name amen here are some announcements if you have missed any of our sermons you can watch them by logging in on papa's house through youtube soundcloud iTunes and Facebook. We have a family support program where we support single mothers and their children by getting provisions through finances and opportunities to earn a livelihood through small businesses. Every Friday through our homeless feeding program, our team prepares and distributes food packets for homeless people in and around Vellore. We would encourage you to join us in this program by either preparing or distributing food packets and also by considering making your generous contributions through your finances. If you consider yourself to be a part of Papa's house, then we would encourage you to send your tithes and offerings. But if you are visiting Papa's house for a few occasions, and led by the spirit and you feel that papa's house has made a difference in your spiritual life and your connection with christ you could consider sowing a small seed through an offering we would make sure it falls on the good soil so that it reaps a good reward from god you can find the details of the bank accounts and google pay should you decide to send in your offering to us we will intimate to you once we have received it also here are the links on how you can reach and follow us thank you lord jesus uh, <clears throat> thank you brother for uh, sharing prayer requests and you know uh, now we're going to have a prophetic declaration we're going to prophesy over our finance and <clears throat> you know and offering and tithes as we give our tithes and offering to the lord we declare when i give i become more like jesus he taught me how to give by giving himself completely without holding anything to himself when i give i recognize i can never outgive god i can never go broke by giving to god and never come short of my needs because i have given to god when i give i co-create with him and co-partner with him to build his kingdom in and through me in india and in the nations of this world this i declare in jesus name yes lord jesus now it's time to uh, hear the word of god so prepare your heart and you know god going to speak to us yes lord jesus lord uh thank you so much lord jesus lord we pray lord jesus that you're going to speak to us lord jesus and also we submit uh, uh charles and i in your mighty hand lord jesus yes lord use him for your glory lord jesus and lord we are preparing our heart lord jesus we are emptying ourselves so that you can fill us lord jesus we give you glory and honor in jesus name amen good morning dear ones so good to see you this morning <laughs> We welcome you in the name of Jesus. My name is Charles. Welcome to Papa's house. And if you're watching this in the evening uh, uh, through Facebook, we welcome you. I believe the Lord has something beautiful for us to 
receive, not just to enjoy in our soul, but to really align ourselves with his original design. Let's just get into the word uh, with a word of prayer. Father, speak to us. We ask you to influence us. Holy Spirit, you are the greatest influencer of our life. I pray that you will speak to us. I step out of your way. Have your way in and through us. In Jesus' name. Amen. The title this morning, the Lord put in my heart to share, is called Sunrise. Sunrise. You know, many years ago, in I think 2001, I remember when I did my DTS, the Lord started expanding my heart for according to his heart. And he started speaking to me about the nations, about uh, uh, opening doors in such a way that I will be going to spread the gospel. And as I told you, I never traveled outside Tamil Nadu. So when I went to do my DTS, Discipleship Training School, I felt I was a foreigner in my own country because the frontier that I crossed uh, until the age of 24 was Katpadi to Chitur. That was the frontier I crossed. So imagine this, moving out of my comfort zone, being in Pune and talking in Hindi, which was quite foreign to my, la to my native language, Tamil. And uh, I remember the Lord brought uh, many people around me who would agree with the word that he has put in my heart and to confirm it. And I remember very, very clearly, and it's I can remember just like it happened last week or even yesterday. I just so clearly I remember there was a lady. She was not very prophetic. She doesn't move in that, uh, you know, charismatic thing or anything. But I remember she came to me in one of those coffee, we call it chai break. And I remember in the chai break, we were just hanging out and I'm having my chai. I was get used to this vada pav, you know, uh, if you are familiar uh, in the in Maharashtra, it's very, very beautiful. They have done something with a, a normal burger bun. They put this potatoes, um, deep fried potatoes and chilies and it's yummy. And I was having my chai and vada pav. This lady came to me and she gave me an envelope and she put 40 rand, which is like... Uh, an equivalent of uh, maybe four to five dollars and she put it inside and she said I believe the Lord is opening doors for you you need to step out in faith and let me tell you when I received that envelope uh, I didn't feel anything but the reason why because I and very many of us we do the same sometimes when God gives us a word or does something uh, to us he usually wraps it up in disguise because for me if that letter would have received i would have received or the envelope i would have received from darlene cunningham or lauren cunningham or one of those guys who are super charismatic i would have immediately took that word and said wow thank you for that but sometimes when god gives a word he wraps it up in disguise and i remember I look at this and I'm like, yeah, that's good. I, I, I know this, but I was not super thrilled. But the later the Lord rebuked and I repented, I stepped out in faith. And I, you know the story, my first nation out of India to go uh, was South Africa. That was at the age of 25. And since then, the Lord opened miraculous doors to more than 110 countries to share the gospel. But it all started with a simple a prophetic act by a lady who was not even charismatic but she just heard the Lord and obeyed and invested it into my life through that obedience and and I could have totally missed that big picture if I have just looked at the cover not the content and many times what we do is we judge people by the cover and there is that's the idiom that goes in, in English it says don't judge the book by its cover and why I'm telling you this uh, many of you know I'm re we are recording this message on Thursday and the Lord put this in my heart to share this as of now uh, there is no clear um, winner uh, for the US politics uh, there is no clear winner who wants the White House who won the White House so uh, there's so much chaos so many challenges 
But I, I, I want to say this to you, and maybe some of you are going to be super offended with me, but I'm going to share this with you. Uh, I'm not trying to take sides, but sometimes this is the word of the Lord, and I believe this very strongly. Many times when the Lord brings a word or he brings a direction, he wraps it up in a, in a package that we personally may not even like it. And I have seen so many Christians, uh, they got offended by the package called Trump. Uh, and they said, oh, this guy, you know, he is like this. This guy is arrogant. This guy, you know, he makes remarks about women like this. This guy has got this past. And I want to challenge you, you know, uh, this is this is gonna really really hit you hard I want to challenge you how is your own heart in this uh, you know are, are you corrupt free are you uh, uh, judgmental free are you um, you know uh, immoral free are you never had a lustful thought did you never had a lustful thought uh, did you never uh, had an arrogant spirit or you rebelled against God and authority uh, I'm not saying those things are, you know, God ignores it for a greater good. What I'm trying to say is, if the Lord brings you and me to a place and you only see the outer frame and you say, well, that doesn't look good. I'm not going to take it. Guess who's the loser? You can fill in the blank. And I just have the fear of the Lord to share this with you. And that's why I felt the Lord was telling me, Son, rise. Son, rise. The daughters, it's not just, you know, I'm speaking only for the sons. It's for the both of them. So turn with me to Isaiah 60. And we're going to read the scripture. It's so beautiful. It says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. If you have time, please read the entire chapter. We don't have time to read the whole chapter. Behold, this is beautiful. Darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. Listen, listen. I know I'm, I'm, I'm going to step on so many people's toes. But listen, my friend, honestly, I love you. And I cannot just give you what you would like to hear. <laughs> I, if I do that, I am doing you a total disservice. So I'm going to make some statements. And I believe the Lord has put this in my heart. And I'm going to make some statements that's going to challenge your worldview. And it's going to challenge your perception. And I want to encourage you to not... Turn me off or to say this guy is nuts, you know, uh, <laughs> or to really allow the Holy Spirit to, to work in your heart. All right. So look at this verse. It says, arise, shine. The very fact that God says this to his people, arise, that, that tells us that we have lost our legal position. What is our legal position? Ephesians 2, 6 says that we are seated with him in the heavenlies. You know, our legal position is to co-reign with him. Our legal position is to see the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. But too many times Christians have sidetracked it and they have said, you know what? You know, the so-called Calvinistic thinking. If it is God's will, he will bring it. If it is God's will, he will do it. If it is God's will, this is going to happen. If it is God's will, he will raise his people up. You know, that is actually a bunch of lie we believed into this. And I want to challenge your thinking. The very fact God is saying, arise, is saying that shows that we have lost our legal position. That position as we have, we have came from that position, we have fallen from that position. Romans talks about that man when he fall from sin you fall from the glory of God from the mind of God and, and I want to challenge you to think about it you know what are some of the things that Jesus gave you that you just put aside and you just you know took the normal road you know I remember Bill Johnson said this people a person with more hope 
as the most uh, uh, as the as the most uh, uh, influence in the conversation and I want to tell you as Christians many times uh, instead of being the most hopeful people we have <laughs> become you know the most hopeless or pessimistic or doomsday people and I, I want to encourage you to think about this for a moment the Lord says arise you know what have you fallen from maybe you have fallen from the original design of God Maybe you have fallen from the, the, the mind, the culture of God. Maybe you have fallen from God's design for a nation. Uh, you know, I know as a Christian, Indian, we are a minority in our country of 1.2 billion people. But that doesn't give me a permission to put on the victim hat and say, I'm a minority, I'm a minority religion. I am just like this. No, God says, ask of me and I will give you the nation as my inheritance. And I am asking the Lord, God, give my nation India as my inheritance. Give my nation, my state Tamil Nadu, my city Vellur. Give me this nation. Give me my city. Just like Caleb said, as I was strong when I was 40 years old, I am 85 now. Give me this mountain. My friends, I want to encourage you. You know, uh, sometimes we Christians, we just take a very uh, a lousy post stand. You know, uh, we just say, uh, well, God is in control. <laughs> Can I tell you something? God is not in control. If God is in control, why there is still rape? God is sovereign. God is sovereign, but he wants his people to take his stand. He wants his people to arise and to stand in what he has called us to stand. Let's keep going. For your light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And many times I've said this to you. The word glory means the mind, the weightiness of God, the culture of God. And my friends, when you don't rise up to that place where God has called you to live and to stand and to decree. What happens? We lose the mind of God. We lose the culture of God. Many times Christians don't have the culture of God. They, they don't even know if God has a culture. They don't even know if God has a mind. <laughs> they don't even know if, if, is there a way to find out the mind of God? They just go with this so-called survival mode, religious rut, and they think one day, you know, just because they received Jesus in their heart, they're going to go to heaven and that's it. My friends, there is a mandate for us on this earth. There is a mandate for us to rise up, to claim what has God already decreed over his people on this planet earth. Amen. And look at this. Behold darkness. And that's something that we do when you, when you fall down, when you are on the view. Oh, behold darkness. Cover the earth. Deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you. And his glory will be seen upon you. My friends, I want to tell you, in the midst of this chaos, there is always God's shalom rises. In the midst of the problem, there is the peace that surpasses all understanding that raises. In the midst of confusion, God still reigns. And the midst of all this uncertainty, Christ becomes your central hope. In the midst of all this, uh, uh, you know, traumatic experience that you go through in your life, God is still sovereign. And I want to challenge you to think about this for a moment. The King of Glory is saying, Arise! Yes, thick darkness is there. Yes, corruption is there. You know, <laughs> we are familiarized with the word corruption in politics in India. You know, we are, we are familiarized. And right now, I'm 43 years old and I've been listening to the politics of many nations and especially the U.S. And this word of this amount of corruption, you don't see it like you have never seen it before. And, and, and I'm asking myself, like, my goodness, what's going on? And the Lord is saying, yes, thick darknesses are there. Why darkness is there? 
the darkness exists on the absence of light and I, I want to challenge you to think about this. Yes, thick darknesses are there. The thick darknesses are over your society, over your different spheres of influences. But the Lord is saying, don't focus on the thick darknesses. The Lord is saying, the Lord, I will arise in such a way that my glory will be seen. My friends, I have no clue where you are at right now. You know, with all this Zoom teaching, YouTube, I have never personally met you in months and we got stuck here. And with all those distance, social distancing, I have no clue how your relationship with the Lord. I have never even had a cup of coffee with you in the last eight months, sat with you and asked you, how are you doing? Because it's, 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 when I check with you on WhatsApp or Facebook, you say fine and I say fine. We say by His grace, you know, we all have this cliche statements so that boom 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 you know and but i think uh, i i think we we need to uh, we need to uh, we need to get real before god we need to ask god like god what's going on you know what uh, what's uh, what's your what's your original design why uh, why i i have to s be sucked by this darkness but can't see your light and I believe the Lord is taking us to your place. And But the first thing, and I feel this very strongly, and, and, and I believe you will, you will sense it in your spirit, in order for you to rise, you know, if you read Luke 15, Luke 15 talks about those three lost things, lost son, lost coin, and lost sheep. And the lost son story, if you read it, the first thing the lost son did, he came up to himself. And the second thing he said, I will rise up and go to my father. And I believe, and I believe this is something that God is inviting us. And there are three principles I want to leave it with you. And it's very simple, but it is, it is, it is not, uh, uh, it is not something that you can brush it away. It is still very profound. And this is what God is inviting us into. Sunrise, the first thing as a sons and daughters, we need to rise up. We need to first repent, repent. And I have, we in Papa's house, we talk about repentance a lot. Why? Because we do believe aligning with God is so important because in order for you to get into the original design of God, you cannot keep going south and expect God to turn your life 180 degrees you have to change and repent and when i talk about repent it's not about just you know god i repent of my sins come into my heart i'll make you my lord and savior and boom now you are born again you are boomed marked to go to heaven i'm not talking just about that i'm talking about your daily walk with christ you're carrying your cross with every day in every area of your life repentance from pride are you are you you know are you repenting from pride how many times we christian <coughs> made prideful statements you know pride you know religious pride uh, educational pride social pride status pride you know even even the place where you live that locality pride uh, pride and my friends listen i I've, I've read this bible few times and i tell you this with the fear of the lord and again, not to tell this in a prideful way. I've read this Bible. Please, hear my heart. I've never read one place in the Bible where God says, I'm against you. He detests. He, it, 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 he detests lies. He, it's an abomination when you, when you do adultery and all those things. Yes, it's horrible stuff. But there is only one place he says, I'm against you. Is when? When you are prideful. Wow. Wow. I want to challenge you guys. Pride. The moment you say arrived, you know, you are pride. <laughs> when you say, I don't have pride, you take pride in take saying that I don't have pride. That's why it's important every single day you humble yourself in the mighty hand of God. You humble yourself every single day, every single moment, every single compliment. You say, God, I give it back to you. They're talking about you because Christ in me is the hope of glory. Repent from arrogance. Number two, 
Arrogance. What is that arrogance spirit? I know it all mentality. Saul did that. He lost his throne. You know, arrogant mentality. I know it all. I, I can just, you know, I, I, I can fix this. This me mentality. You know, the biggest enemy of your life and my life is not the enemy out there. It's not the world around us. It's the me, the self, the self that's inside of us that's saying, I, 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 I. That's what made Lucifer to fall down. I will ascend up. I will be exalted. My friends, this arrogant spirit, it's such a yeah, prideful sin in the eyes of the Lord. And God wants us to repent of that. What is the best way to beat arrogance? John chapter 3, verse 30, I believe. It's when John said, I decrease, you may increase. That's the thing. Every time, you say, when you deal with it, I won't get this. Ask God, God, are you increasing me in my life right now? When I have this conversation that is different to my political views and I feel rage abhorring in my life coming up, am I seeing you increase or me increase? Am I, when I into this conflict with this person, am I seeing you increase or me increasing? That is a good way to check it out. Number three, repenting from immorality. Repent from immorality. And many times we Christians, we can say, well, brother, I'm not. I'm married to the same wife for the last 25 years. I'm married to the same, you know, girl for the last 10 years. Or married to the, I'm, I'm having, I know, I didn't sleep with anyone. I, I didn't check any porn. But what about lust? You know, what about your thoughts? Are you bringing that to the Lord? Imagine if God says, I'm going to take you to PVR and I'm going to give you, a, you know, a premiere uh, preview for you. You alone with a bunch of popcorn. You sit there. What I'm going to do is you sit you alone and I'm going to show all your thoughts that you went through in your life. I want to put it all together like, like a montage for the one hour video. Do you think you and me will be happy to see that? Imagine that. If God says, I'm going to show it to your congregation, to your friends. Imagine that. So my friends, I want to encourage you to humble yourself and repent and say, God, shine your light over me. Put, you know, let your cross deal with me in those areas. And number four, repent from religious mentality. And that's something that we have inherited in India as Indian Christians. Why? Because we came from a religious background. India is a religious country and we know doing things can make us feel good or doing things means God will hear us. That's what religion has taught us. You know, you, you can bring God down by doing your works. My, my friends, I want to encourage you. What is some of the religious mentality by thinking that because you prayed a lot, you are more fervent Christian than the person who didn't pray. Uh, that's a religious mentality. Just because you go to your church that operates in the spiritful uh, lifestyle, that doesn't mean the guy who goes to another church is less spiritual. And that's, you know, I mean, I, there is a, a room for uh, judging. There is a room for discernment. I do believe that. But if that comes to a place where you are, you know, uh, I am better than you. My church is better than you. We have missed the whole point, you know. And the last but not the least, and this is something very familiar, and this is uh, repenting from familiarity. Uh, familiarity with God. You know, we just take God for granted. And 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 the, the saddest thing, this Tozer says this, the saddest thing that the body of Christ, the believers of Christ have done this, uh, to, to themselves uh, is to reduce God to their level of understanding, to familiarize. You know, we reduce our theology, even understanding about God based on our experiences. And, and we say, you know what, that's why we make statements like this. Maybe it's not God's will for everyone to be healed. But Acts 10, 38 gives us a yeah, precedence where it says, Jesus of Nazareth went about healing everyone who are under the tyranny of devil and God was with him. 
and we have this sense of saying you know it doesn't work this doesn't work that doesn't work you know what and the sense of familiarity and we we kind of like ah i know god how it works you know first two songs happy songs slow songs and then little bit of emotion and then some announcement now in video announcements and this guy is going to come and talk i know that's familiarity but if you come with a heart of expectation god speak to me he will help you to see you know in an unconventional way so that's the first thing repentance that's the first part of to arise to shine that's what we need to do repent number 2 realign realign and this is very important once you have repented luke 15 says the guy says i will arise and go to my father and he came to his senses he realigned he said to his father father i am not worthy to be your son i am not worthy even to be your servant i just going to be in in somewhere in you know just be a servant i just you know stay in a staff servant quarters and i am just you know i'm not going to be there please have mercy and and this is something uh i want to encourage you to think about this realign ourselves to his original design what is the original design of god have you sat and asked god what is your original design for my life for my family for my friends for my city that i live in you know many times uh, this is something that we do many times uh, for those who go abroad uh, you know what you what this is something that we tend to do we stand in a beautiful garden we stand in a beautiful road and we take a picture and and have you ever tried to imagine that in our own in your own city and sometimes you feel like man my city is not that beautiful have you ever sat down and asked god god what is your original design for my city vellore what is that lord can you speak to me you know is vellore supposed to be green clean and beautiful and mosquito free <laughs> you know what is the original design realign to what the word of the lord is for your life for your family that's number 2 realign you know god has spoken to you and i believe you have the word realign say god i need to change my heating habit i need to change my reading habit i need to change my watching tv habit i need to change you know my association of friends so that i can realign to your original design to realign to your word to realign to your purposes you know many times uh, we christians that's why i said to you it's so easy to judge the book by its the cover and say well you know what is the original purpose what is the purpose christians has to align to the word of god to the original dream you know to say god you know to to kill a baby on the on 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 the 40th week god he doesn't he doesn't consider that as one of the political issue for him it matters it matters it matters because he is the creator of life hello so think about it and ask yourself like am i am aligning myself to god's original design am i aligning myself to the word of god am i aligning myself to his purposes am i aligning to his dreams revelation 7 9 talks about number 4 aligning my, am i myself to the dreams that every nation every tribe will bow before him am i aligning myself to his heartbeat you know we sing this song change my heart oh god you remember that song make it ever true am i aligning myself to his heartbeat that means uh, that what hurts him hurts me or i just say you know this morning i felt to write a devotion there are three levels of uh, emotions one is uh, sympathy another one is empathy another one is compassion and sympathy is like poor shame on you i feel sorry empathy is like yeah i understand i i can feel your pain but then there's another one which is so beautiful it's compassion and the bible says so many scriptures it says jesus moved in compassion moved in compassion and my friends am i aligning myself to the heartbeat of god the 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 injustice the poor and the needy the challenges the the situation the crisis the pain the people go through the the homeless situation in our city the the unemployment the uh, the religious un, uh, the religious freedom that we don't have all those things am i aligning myself to the heartbeat of god and say god have mercy and finally realigning to his ways uzziah says i think in 
and the last book of Hosea it says the ways of the Lord is always right you know? and that's the number two arise shine what do you do for arise and shine you repent and realign and number three you restart you restart and that's the thing you you restart you 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 step out in faith and i remember receiving this envelope and, and at the beginning i was like okay whatever but then after the lord rebuked uh, my my unbelief you know we, many of us we have this unbelief right and but we need to pray that prayer lord help me i believe you but help me in my unbelief and i i, I prayed that prayer lord help me in my unbelief and after i got stepped out in faith and i tell you my friends you know I, I, it was a miracle and i tell you one story i need to go to i needed to go to do my leadership training school in holland i didn't have money and i i remember one day walking with my friend i didn't have money and i said lord i need money this is a real story i'm not adding any masala to it as a walking i found an envelope with all that money that i needed for the visa fees and for my transportation in that envelope and why i'm telling you this story when you step out in faith god open miraculous doors he does it either through people or he just drops it up in the air you know i remember my friend who was uh, uh, took a team to china and and they ran out of money and and they had the last money the team money to 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 buy the bread and that's it they have to stay the remaining weeks they planning even to fast so she went to the bakery to buy with that last portion of money to buy the bread for that morning breakfast and she don't speak chinese and the lady at the counter don't speak english so she kind of negotiated and asked i want this bread the lady said i won't give you this bread but i won't give you i will give you this bread i won't give this but i'll give you this and finally she gave up and she gave the money put the change on the counter and the lady gave the bread and she came home when she opened the bread there was enough money inside the bread that could sustain them for the remaining part of the outreach why i am telling you this we can never see the glory of god rising upon us and we can never see the glory of god manifesting if we are still not rising up if we still not repenting if we still not realigning if we still not getting our ourselves out of the comfort zone amen i want to challenge you to think about this we're going to wrap it up in prayer patrick will come he's going to take lead us in in, in communion and as you take this bread and elements and the and the wine you sit together and you realign yourself god where did i fell and fall where did i need to rise up again where do i need to repent where do i need to realign where do i need to see you uh, the way you see i don't want to judge people by the cover i don't want to judge people by the outlook i want to go beyond that and look at the purpose the ultimate purpose of god you know and so just to briefly to recap it it's up in the screen arise means get up from your place go move from your comfort zone nothing grows out of your comfort zone number 3 shine share the good news unapologetically in love and that's a, some important thing in love unapologetically in love don't be ashamed that you're a christian don't say i'm sorry i'm embarrassed no just be proud of being a christian but at the same time in love in love when you want to rebuke your friend your your neighbor your coworker who is drifting away from the ways of the lord unapologetically share the good news but in love and glory carry the mind of christ everywhere you go and if you feel there are moments where confusion chaos like this week so many challenges going ask for the mind of christ to come and say god give me your i want to see through your lenses you know this is something that i i i i pray this god when i when i don't agree with a person i want to ask god and i am asking god god i want to see this person the way you see can you please tell me and i tell you my friend god opens doors in such a way he is like wow i could see a glimpse of a glimpse of a glimpse of how god sees and my heart is thrilled by that amen so arise shine for your light has come the glory of the lord is risen upon you let's pray father i just want to thank you so much for my brothers and sisters i pray that we will 
rise. We will move out from our place of comfort zone. We will, we will move out from our place where we were never supposed to be there because it's not your original design. So we will move out just like this Luke 15, this uh, prodigal son said, I will rise up. I will come to my sense. I will rise up. I will go to my father. So father, we run to you. We repent. We realign ourselves to your original design and we restart again to what you have called us to do to build your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. So give us the courage, Father, today and for this coming days and for this coming season of our life to realign ourselves as we repent so that we can start what you have started in and through us and to see your kingdom manifested in tangible way. So we thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you guys. We love you. And we are praying for you every day. Take care. Yes, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, Lord. Thank you so much for speaking to us, Lord Jesus. Yes, Father, Lord Jesus. Help us to apply in our life, Lord Jesus. And Lord, <coughs> we are faithful, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. We want to obey you, Father, Lord Jesus. And uh, Lord, we give it everything to you, Father, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we, uh, we're going to have communion, Lord Jesus. Lord, help us to be thankful, Lord Jesus. Help us to be, help us to be gratitude, Lord Jesus, towards your flesh and blood, Lord Jesus. Yes, Father, Lord Jesus. And you are... saved us you saved us lord jesus you you brought us from from darkness into light lord jesus thank you so much lord your blood and flesh is our life and lord in isaiah 53 it says lord jesus we despised him and rejected him he endured suffering and pain no one would even look at him we ignored him as if he were nothing but he endured the suffering that should have been ours the pain that we should have borrowed. All the while, we thought that his suffering was punishment sent by God. But because of our sins, he was wounded, beaten because of the evil we did. We were healed by the punishment he suffered, made whole by the blood he received. Yes, Lord. Thank you so much for your great, great sacrifice, Lord Jesus, for us. Lord, thank you so much for taking all our punishment and our sins, our curse, our our addiction, our, 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 our struggles, our pain, our rejection, everything, Lord Jesus, our disappointment, and everything on the cross, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much. And you gave us peace. You gave us salvation. You brought us into your presence, Lord. Thank you so much, Father, Lord Jesus. Lord, we remember your flesh and blood in, in our life, Lord Jesus. We remember, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much for forgiving us washing us with your blood lord jesus and in your wounding we find healing lord jesus thank you lord jesus thank you lord jesus thank you so much lord jesus this is your flesh and blood lord jesus that made us completely whole thank you so much father lord Thank you so much for giving us chance after chance to come back to you, to the first love, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much for forgiving us, Lord. Thank you so much for forgiving our, our, our sins, Lord. Thank you so much for forgiving us completely, Lord Jesus. Washing us with your blood. Bringing us back into your original design, bringing us back into your first love. Thank you so much for restoring us, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, um, for giving us a great privilege to, to, to be a part of 
in your communion, Lord Jesus, to take part of your flesh and blood in our life. Thank you so much, Father Lord Jesus. Lord, you are faithful, Lord Jesus. And Lord, and thank you so much for giving us a heart to worship you and hear from you, Lord. Lord, I pray for the people who are watching and who are going to watch, Lord Jesus, this service. Let every moment of their life be encountering you, Father, Lord Jesus. To come back to you every moment, Lord Jesus, because there is no one like you in this world. Only you are with us, Lord Jesus. And everything fails, you always with us, Lord. You never will fail, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much, Father, Lord Jesus. And Lord, Lord Jesus, we pray for your great, great love in our life, Lord Jesus, to surround us and, and your grace, your mercy, and your presence, Lord Jesus, in our life, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much, Father, Lord Jesus. And we give you glory and honor in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Thank you, church. We'll see you next week. Have a beautiful week. God bless you, everyone. Shalom. My dear friends, if you're here for the first time and you don't know receiving Jesus in your heart and having a relationship with him is one of the most important thing for every human being on this planet earth. And if you've never given your heart to the Lord today, why don't you pray this prayer with me? Lord Jesus, I give my heart to you. Come into my heart. I repent of my sins. I want you to be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of all my sins. Jesus, from today onwards, I want to start a brand new life with you. I confess that you are my Lord. You died for my sins. You rose again. And I believe you are my Lord. My dear friends, if you prayed this prayer, I believe you are into this beautiful family of God. And my friends, I want to let you know, whenever you go back to your past, you will only see the blood of Jesus. Why? Because the blood of Jesus has covered and paid for all your sins. You are a born again person. You are wiped. You are your sins are wiped out completely. And you are a new creation. Please, I want to encourage you. Stay connected to your local church. Be plugged in into your Bible-based, spirit-filled church. And if you need a prayer, write to us. We would love to pray with you. We would love to send you some materials where we can ask you to join this new relationship that you just began in a more thriving and exciting way. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Amen. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you.